Using a color picker in Quasar is ridiculously simple. We just say Q-color, save it, and there we go. We get this beautiful, rich color picker with virtually no work. How unbelievably cool is that? We even get this nice palette by default. So you can have a play around with that, pause the video if you wanna have a little bit of a play, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Now, first of all, I'll show you what you can model with the color picker. It's quite versatile. So let's say picked color here, and then I'll copy that, yank ref out of here, come down and say setup, return, picked color, const picked color is equal to a reference, and now let's play around with some default colors. So we can say hashtag 50ED8C, save it, and there we go. Now it's going to model that color. So that's a hex value. We can also use a hex alpha value. If I add the alpha in the back there, notice that it's going to bring in the alpha as well. So this is a little bit transparent now. Another type of value that we can add is RGB. So RGB, and let's set that equal to 127, 121, 230. Save it. And there we go. It's going to model the RGB value. Then of course, we've also got red, green, blue, alpha. So let's add in there an alpha channel of 0.5. So it's 50% transparent. And there we go. It works. How cool is that? And just to show that this is being modeled behind the scenes, check this out. We can now say picked color inside of these pre-tags and it works. And let's have a little bit of fun here. How about we say style is equal to background dash color, and I'll turn that into a template string. And we set that equal to picked color. Save it. And there we go. Now we can change the background color of the screen by changing this color. How cool is that? Ridiculously easy with Quasar and it looks great. All right, what else can we do? I might get rid of this just in case it becomes a little bit annoying for you. And we'll go through some more examples. Oh, here's a cool example I found in the docs. We can use a pop-up proxy to show this color in a dialog. I'll show you what I mean. So if we say Q-input, so we'll have an input form here, and then a template inside of that input form, and then we'll use a slot for append. Now, if I just put the letter A in here, for example, check this out. Now we've got an input with that A showing at the side there. So let's change this now to filled. I think it usually looks better when an input is filled. It's a little bit easier to see. And then instead of an A, let's say Q-icon, and then give it a name equal to colorizer. Now, it might just be colorize. Oh, colorize. There we go. So now we've got that icon. Let's make it look like it's clickable. Because if I put my mouse over it, I don't get that sort of clickable icon on my mouse. So I can say class is equal to cursor dash pointer. Or you can make this a button, whatever you like. And now it kind of looks like I can click on that icon. Next, if we add a Q dash popup dash proxy, that's going to attach to this icon so that when this icon is clicked, anything sitting inside of this component will display. I'll show you what I mean. Let's cut that, whack it in the pop-up proxy. Now, when I click on here, we can see the Q color component. How cool is that? And if we were on a smaller device, so let's go to a mobile device, it's going to show it in a dialogue instead. So that's pretty cool. All right, back to our example. If we come in here and then change this value around, we probably wanted to change the value in the input as well. So let's grab this V model here for the picked color and also model it on the input. So if I save that, if I come in here and change the color, it also changes it on the input. And one cool little feature here is that if we're using RGB by default, it's going to use RGB by default on the color picker. That's the way it will model it by default. But if I change this to a hex value like 202020, 20, 20, save it, then now it's going to use a hex value by default. So it's, it's kind of smart enough to say, oh, I can see you're using a hex value here, therefore I will model it as a hex value. And the exact same thing is going to work if we add an alpha channel. So there we go. It's still going to model it as a hex value with an alpha channel. 
really cool stuff. All right, what else can we do? Well, something you might want to know is that we actually have some color validation available to us. Yes, that's right. Validation for colors out of the box with Quasar. So if I come in here and say rules, turn that into an array, we can add here any color. So if you're used to the way that Quasar usually handles rules, usually you've got, for example, value and then equal to, and then you're at condition and then an or operator with a message. Well, we can actually just say here any color because that's a, that's a rule that Quasar gives us by default. And to see what rules you have available to you, go to the Quasar docs for the Q color component and check out the with Q input section. And it's gonna have a link to all of the available validator rules that you get by default. But I'll show you a couple. If we change that to something that is not a color, oh, that's not working. Let's try refreshing the page. Cross that out. All right, there we go. Notice that it's going to squawk at us and say, hey, you haven't entered a valid color. In which case we could say, for example, 20, 20, 20. And then once it is a valid color, it'll work. All right, so the reason it was working before is that this is actually a valid hex color. We can also say specifically, I want a hex color here. So this is going to work, hashtag 20, 20, 20, but hashtag 20, 20, 20, CC is not going to work. So if we want a hex alpha color, we've got a validator for that too. So now that's going to validate and a normal hex color is not going to validate. So there's quite a few rules here we have for colors. Once again, you can go to the docs and check out the with Q input section to see the link to all of those available rules. All right, what else can we do? Well, let's go back to a simpler example by just bringing in the Q color component. And if we want to get rid of this header here, we can say no dash header and it's gone. And then we can say no dash footer and it's gone. So you can simplify things however you like. But now we're kind of stuck on this one page. So if you want to change what that page is, we can come in here and say default view and set that equal to, for example, palette. Save that and it's going to give us the palette view by default. And now if we want to see what color is selected on that palette, then we can come in here and say Q dash card. And how about we say the style is equal to width, maybe 100 pixels, and then a height of 100 pixels. And what we could do is basically set the background color to this card to the color that was picked. So let's grab picked color here and then make sure that is executed and change this to a template string then we can say background dash color and then say that's going to be equal to the picked color. And there we go. Now we can pick a color here and this, this card is going to update its background based on what is picked. How cool is that? Quasar makes this stuff so easy. I mean, look at the amount of code we've written for this ridiculously cool example. I think it's awesome. We can also have a custom palette here. So if you wanna force the user to select a few select colors that you want, because maybe they need to fit the design of your website, then you can do something like this. Palette is equal to an array, and then you just whack your colors directly in there. Then those colors will be available within the, within the palette. So notice that I've got up here, hslpicker.com. Now we can choose a color. I'm just gonna grab that one, whack it in there copy it down a little, a few times, and then just grab some other colors just so I can drive this example home. Copy paste that one. I really love this side. It makes it really easy to pick the color that you want and also just copy it in the way that you want it copied. So we'll paste that one in there and let's finish off with like more of a reddish one. There we go. I think that looks pretty cool. So paste that one in there. And now if we come back to the color picker, we've got those colors that we selected available to us. So if you want that extra flexibility, it's super easy using the Q color picker component. Now, there's a little niche thing that you can do with this component that I wanna show you. If the default picked color is equal to null, so maybe you want to force the user to actually select a default color, you can set that equal to null. And now let's get rid of the no header and footer here and all of this palette examples, bring us back to a basic example. 
There we go. So now, what we can actually do is change the default color. So if I say default value here and set it equal to something like hashtag 28DE0, something I prepared earlier. Now we refresh the page here. Oh, I've forgotten a five in here. Save that. And there we go. That's the default value. But there's something I want to point out here. If I whack inside of a pre tag here, the value of picked color. So we whack that in there. Notice that picked value, notice that picked color isn't actually showing up with a value. Once again, I refresh the page, it's not showing. That's because picked value is equal to null, and default value is simply saying, this is the color I will show by default, but I'm not going to set the model to that value. All right, so that's an important thing to distinguish between default value and setting a default picked color value. So you might want to pause the video and listen to that again to understand what I mean by that. Basically, if we model a value here, then that can be the default picked value, right? So if we were to set this to um, a color, then that's what the default value would be, and it would actually be set in our state for picked color. However, if we set default value here, it will show that as the picked color, but it won't set it as that color in the state. All right, so not super important if you're starting out, but that might be helpful to more advanced users. But now, once we actually pick a color, it's going to show up there. All right, once again, if I were to take this value here and put it into picked color, then by default, if I refresh the page, that is no longer null. That By default, it is going to be set to that value. All right, so now that I've mentioned that, we can move on. Q color can also be disabled. If we say disable, save it, then it's not going to let us change the value, but it will let us change between these different screens. So that's good to know. Quasar is basically saying, hey, you can switch between these screens so you can sort of see what's available here, but I'm not going to let you change the color. The changing of the color itself is what's disabled. Another thing we can do is change that to read only. And this is kind of similar, but it doesn't sort of gray it out. So to me, this is like, hey, this is a color that somebody else picked, for example. Or maybe it's saying, this is what you picked at an earlier state, but you're not in an edit mode. You know, this is kind of, these are the situations where read only can come in handy. Once again, I can't change these values, but I can switch between to actually see them. This could be good, for example, if you have a color palette for your team and you want a good way to show the colors that are available to the team. So they can sort of switch between here to see the different ways that that color has been picked. So they can sort of see the RGB of it. They can come in here and see where it's selected up there. I don't know. That could be a good situation for read only. And the last thing I want to show you in this video, let's move back to a simpler example. Get rid of the model here. Save it. In fact, we can get rid of read only as well. Now let's wrap this inside of a Q dash form. Now, if you're using Q color inside of a Q form, and imagine we've got a Q dash button here, and the type of that button is submit so that you can actually submit the form. Let's set the label equal to submit as well. Save it. When I click on this, notice that up here, we don't have any data that was submitted. So let's click on that again. Once again, there's no data submitted there. In order to submit that data, we need to have a name equal to something like color. So if you're submitting color using the native form properties, you do need to set name on the Q color component. So now when I submit this, the color is going to be submitted as well. And it's set to nothing by default here. So let's actually choose a color, submit, and there we go, now the color has been submitted to the page. So that's useful to know if you wanna tie this into a backend using native form submitting. And there you go, that's the Q color picker component. Hope you enjoyed this one, see you in the next video.